All right. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview where every single week I interview top real estate professionals, top entrepreneurs, and straight up top badasses out there dominating their space. And today, guys, we've got an absolute another rock star here on the, G- the GSD Mode podcast. This is a gentleman that I actually met in person last week. We're both in Arkansas speaking at an event. I had the honor to not just meet him, but to share the stage with him. Um, You know, he and his wife and his team are absolutely crushing it in Florida. Uh, Just to give some context, last year they did about 33 million in gross volume sales. This year they're on pace to about 20% above that and just continuing to grow scale and just so many amazing things that we're going to jump into here. So really stoked and honored to have Josue Soto on the podcast. Welcome to the podcast, my friend. What's up, buddy, man? Thank you so much for allowing me to, uh, you know, to share this platform with you, man. I followed you for so many years. I admire your respect, man. Everything that you bring into the uh, the real estate community, Joshua. So let's get this. Let's get this uh, GSD done. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, no, it truly means a lot, dude. And and you know what? What I love about events like we were, you know, both blessed to be able to to speak at last week is, you know, just I mean, I've been to so many conferences as I'm sure that you have as well. Um, and whether the conferences, events, masterminds, you know, um, and I've always gotten so much out of them. And whether that be, you know, from the speakers on stage, which, you know, I, I'll be honest, I mean, some events I, I've been to where I'm like, okay, you know, didn't, didn't necessarily learn a lot there. Um, but then the connections that you make in the audience and meeting other badasses. And, and luckily at this last event that we spoke at, you know, learned so much or so many badass, amazing speakers like yourself, plus, you know, had the opportunity to meet so many amazing people, meet you and, and we're able to have dinner together and uh, uh, just collaborate. And, um, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I think the turn of this virtual element that our industry has taken, now there's blessings of it. And I love the blessings of it. You know, however, we've got to be more intentional today, I think, than ever before to, to get out there to, you know, masterminds and surround yourself with other badasses like yourself. Absolutely, man. I totally agree. You know, first of all, I mean, I, I really, I'm a hundred percent exactly what you just said, man. Everything just, you know, speaking on stages is important, but I think the more, what I enjoy the most is just kind of spending that time one-on-one and collaborating with you, you know, over dinner and kind of getting to know one another, man, and see how we can all help each other out, man, because this is important. You just touched on something that, you know, with this COVID and everything, man, I think that it really like put a like, a stunt to our, our real estate industry, man, you know, we, you know, we had to go through a lot of adjustments, but in a good way, you know, because to be honest with you, I think that when I, what I've learned from being in this business, Joshua, is that you have to learn that and adjust to what, what the market is providing at the moment, man, you know, and uh, we were able to do that, you know, and I think that those last two years that everyone went through, I think that there's a learning curve to everything, you know, and uh, you shared that on stage, how important it is for you to really track your numbers and, and look at the data, you know, what's happening in 2006 to what's happening right now, you know, there's a lot of resemblance there, man, things are happening, you know, and we have to be paying attention to everything that we're looking at and we're seeing right now. So just that, that time spent together, man, we really learned so much of each other that, it's important for us to get back into these rooms and really understand the importance of coming together again, because we're about to go through a, a, a serious shift right now in our market. It's already happened. Let's say, let me touch on that. It's already happened, but I think there's more coming and I think we have to prepare for this, man, you know, seriously. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, dude. Um, all right, man. So before we jump into all the amazing epic shit that you guys are doing, um, you know, to continue to grow your business during, you know, these challenging times, man, I'm always intrigued in our guest journeys that led them here in the first place. We run the clocks. I mean, what did you do prior before starting your real estate career? And then what led you and, and your wife, Rebecca, and you guys, you know, uh, um, operate your team together? You know, what led you guys into the industry? You know, in 2000, late 2005, well, prior to that, I was a a professional baseball player, by the way, for a year and a half, and kind of had an injury that really ended my career. So I went back to college and uh, really focused on college, man. To me, school was always important, even though I was hung out and, you know, hang out in the streets and hang out with friends. But school to me was was like ideal. I mean, I had to get an education, you know, and. I got my, my degree in three years and decided to move to Florida, man. And here, when I moved to Florida, man, things were tough, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to dive deep into this, man. You know, seriously, it was not easy. You know, you're coming from a, a state that, you know, back then the average wage was like $15, $18 an hour at 18 years old. You come here, it's like seven, eight dollars an hour, man. So it was tough, man, getting into this industry, especially when my career 
so I went back into the trucking business. Trucking business, I, I was driving trucks and they put me through college, believe it or not. A lot of the payments that I had to do, a lot of my overhead, I paid through through that. So I did that for like almost 20 years here, Joshua. And it wasn't until like 2005, man. My wife was in the uh, dental field also, man. She did very well. We both did very well financially, but there was just something we were missing, man. You know, seriously. And we felt like we had more in us and we would, we just looked at each other like, oh, man, we're going to keep doing this for the rest of our life, man. It's just not, we're not doing anything for ourselves, man. You know, and she just said, and she was prior to her going into the dentist industry. She worked under a real estate company for two years as an assistant to the broker. And she kind of knew a lot of the real estate industry, you know, at, at a very young age. So by her doing, learning that, she just felt this hard that uh, she wanted to go back into the real estate business, man. And Sure enough, man, in 2005, she we, we both decided literally, this was our Christmas gift to each other to really take the test. And we went through it and we did the two week test prior to the new year. We both passed and our journey started in 2006. And, and I mean, as you you already know, because you were in that times, but 2006, the market was pretty good. But a couple of years later, during that time, there was a big shift. And, and one of the things that I've learned from coming into the, the market at that time, Joshua, is that I'm going to dive deeper into this because I want to learn everything about real estate. You know, I mean, that's I think that's one of the things that I'm trying to really um, put out there is that if you have the opportunity to learn everything about real estate, man, it, go for it, because you never know when it's always going to come back for you to be prepared for this. And right now we're going to look into a market like this. You know, we were able to, you know, dive deeper into short sales and you, you touched on that on stage and the importance of BPOs, the importance of being an REO agent. So all, every one, every one of these things, we were able to, uh, to dive deeper in and become an expert on that, you know, and learn those, that business. So moving forward, we uh 2010 <laughs> we're crazy enough to we were, we were doing very well we opened up our brokerage right in door that right coming out of that 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 uh bad market and in 2010 man we took the initiative to me i mean people were cra thought i was crazy but i'll say you know what hey listen let's just do it so we opened up our independent brokerage in 2010 we actually were broker owners for nine and a half years to uh three years uh, the last three years in 2019 moving forward we decided that we were missing something in our business the most important thing was it was hard to scale our business man seriously it was very hard at that time even though we were doing very well but we will always get to that 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 like that flat line that we couldn't get over the hump man technology was changing every six months you you and i already know that it's like an iphone iphone 13 comes out six months later 14 is out already you know so technology was like man it was hard for us to really keep up with everything with all the changes and and uh especially in the the tech side the crm side and everything so on uh, 2017 my wife felt like this serious urge about really, really starting to look out outside of our brokerages, trying to interview with other, other, other uh, brokerages. And you know what? I respect her and everything. So we did it. We just didn't feel like it was the right time for us at that moment, you know, and this opportunity was approached to us in 2019 that we had a big group of our brokerages that we know here, partners that we know here at now partners that are with us right now that they wanted to come together and really form this big alliance, man, and how we could come together and grow this business together. And most importantly, give back to the community because I think that's where I want to touch on right now, how important it is for us to get on these stages, but also give back freely of what we've gone through and able to help our, our real estate community. Because at the end of the day, I think you touched on it, it's like no matter how much we give out there, maybe 1% of them are actually going to implement this, you know? But that doesn't stop us, man. We got to keep moving forward, man. So we took the initiative. We uh, we moved over to EXP Realty in 2019. It was a big, big movement. We had like 500 people at one time move over. I'm not kidding. It was a big, big. Uh, I mean, one, one, in one week we had like 500 people move over. It was a big movement. So I mean, we made a splash in our community. Everybody was like, "Man, what's going on here?" But I don't think we did it just for the recognition, Joshua, I think we did it because we want people to know that, you know what, we could work together and build something bigger than what people ex expect us to build, you know, and uh, touching back, you know, we did, like I was telling you in our business, we did very well. We learned everything about our business, man. Like I told you from the beginning to the end, we've been very blessed. 
But at the same token, in order for us to scale our business, we had to make big changes, man. We had to take that leap to fresh. And I truly believe that the last three years in our business right now, moving forward, I really learned so much from ourselves, but learned the importance of being a leader. You know, even though I know what leadership was because of being part of a, a big national organization that I am, but I think it was was more important is I learned so much of myself and learning from others. You know, I love, I love to sit on the rooms and just take notes and listen to other people. And I think that's a big problem that I've learned from other leaders, man. It's like for you to be a leader, you need to be able to sit down and take notes and learn from others, man. That way you can provide and build other leaders uh, moving forward. So that's where I'm at, you know. That's what we yeah. are right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I I love it, man. And you can know, correct me if I'm wrong, but listening to your journey, listening to your story, it seems like one one of the traits that and now I'm an outsider looking in here um, that has led to so much of your success is your adaptability. You know, yeah. um, like you talked about. Okay, hey, you. I mean, you're a pro ball player that gets injured. That's over. You know, uh, m- most people in that situation would probably be like, okay, my whole life I was chasing this dream. This dream was taken away from me from an injury that, you know, my body get, you know, w- whatever it may be, get depressed and, you know, go down this path. And you were like, okay, hey, you know, and I'm sure that was painful and that was tough, but you were like, okay, like, how do I need to adapt to this new situation? You jump back into school and then, you know, then you get to a point where, okay, hey, these industries that you and your wife are in, you know, you thought you were there with the vehicle. Well, then, and most people, you know, after spending decades in an industry are just like, they want to play the safe route. You guys were like, no, man, this isn't the vehicle. Let's now reinvent ourselves, readapt again, you know, and then you did it and you've done that multiple times inside the real estate industry, you know, and and I think that adaptability is just a trait that anybody that I've ever studied that's created big success that they have, you know, because change is inevitable, man. It is, you know, would you, would you say that's an accurate statement to, leading to, you know, so much of your success has been you guys' ability to be able to go out there and adapt and continuously reinvent yourselves? A hundred percent. I mean, you, you, that, that word adaptability is, it's exactly what, exactly what we've gone through. You know, I think it's just the changes that we, we were able to adapt and really continue moving forward because I think that right now what's happening, um, Joshua, is that people are afraid to really take that leap of faith, man, move forward, man. And you know what? Fearful, you know, when you're scared, man, I, to me, fear fear brings more encouragement. It, it, it helps me move forward, man. You know, I think that we have to, if we have to follow our hearts at the end of the day, man, and we have to learn how to adapt with everything that we've gone through and learn from them. I think that's the most important thing. Let's touch on that. We have to learn from every single situation that we got, good or bad. We have to learn from those situations. And, and when you're able to learn from them, that's when you're able to adapt and move forward from it, you know, so... Yeah, man, I'm 100%. You're right. We've been able to adapt and change with, with everything that we've done with our career, with our past career, everything, you know. And I think that trial that I went through that you touched on, you know, I think that baseball career really hurt me, man. I ain't going to lie to you. You know, I'll be the first one. I think that when I uh, when I when I remembered, I went through all that. I think that it took me like six months to really adapt and get back into, you know, what I needed to do first. I had to get up out of bed and say, yo, are you going to keep living a life like this? Or are you going to, or are you going to move forward? Because remember you had a full ride scholarship or to a D one school and you let that go for baseball, but you got to move forward now. And I did, man, you know, you have to, you just can't sit there and dwell on yourself. And, and, and those, I think those darkest times that you go through make you realize that it makes you stronger and make you realize more focused on exactly what's next for you, you know? So, yes. Yep. Love it, man. Um, so, so I'm curious, cause it sounds like we got in the industry around the same time. You know, I got licensed about April, maybe, maybe May, you know, when I actually got started and, and, you know, got my license, you know, all the bullshit, the get, you know, all that stuff in place was able to hang my license with a broker like May of 2005, you know, so it sounds like you guys were, you know, right about that, you know, two, you know, 2005, early 2006. Um, and, and like you mentioned, man, it was kind of like getting licensed and starting in 2001. Or sorry, 2021, Wait, you know, and then all of a sudden, so you had like that, like year, you know, year and in, in maybe a month. And then all of a sudden things just pff, halt, you know, yep. um, and then you guys had to adapt and you, you, you know, you had mentioned uh, uh, something about short sales and BPO. And I know that you had, had referenced, you know, I shared this on stage, but those that are watching and listening to this, you know, weren't at the event that we were at. So, you know, I want you, I mean, like, what did you, and I think that this is very relevant um, uh, because we're all going to have to alter through some big adjustments, you know, here over the next several years. So, so how did you guys, 
you know, go from this crazy market to this halt to, you know, the biggest real estate. I mean, Florida, I mean, not only nationwide do we have the biggest housing crash in recorded history between, you know, it's called 2007 through about 2012. Um, but Florida, Arizona, areas of California were the hardest hit. And, and there were some other pockets too, some in Nevada. Um, but like my state, your state were absolutely just demolished, dude. Absolutely. You know, um, so, so what did you guys do? I mean, ha, like, how did you pivot? How did you shift? How did you continue getting through those times? Because most are just statistics now. They didn't make it through those times. You know, I think that we had to take the first to leave the faith and start learning a lot of these what was important what was moving the needle like we had to go dive deep in and learn bpos records purposes, minutes we we go deep into that we were doing a lot of those you know and um we we by the grace of god we got connected with a couple of asset manager companies that were really pouring a lot into us when it came to and then from there the short sales i can tell you this right now the short sales was a god a god sent angel man i'm not kidding you when i got into this business man i didn't know what to expect man i know I, I just had to sell properties and learn it as i go along you know i think chef like touched on this it's like a lot of times we sit back and expect things to happen we got to go out there and learn from it as we go along and um and it was it was a neighbor next to our real estate company this guy ran a mortgage company man and he had so many leads because he was on the radio that one day he saw me walking into the office he said hey man i may have an opportunity for you man i'm a licensed real estate agent but i can't do this because i run the mortgage division so he says i got all these leads i'm not kidding you man he grabbed a stack like i can't even tell you probably about a hundred files there of people losing their homes, like short sales at the time. And he really guided me a little bit through it. So I started looking at these files and I just started learning. And then Rebecca, Rebecca and I, and some of the, the brokers that I were in, we, we all started working together. We really dove deep into short sales. And at the time we started even teaching short sales to other agents. And it's crazy because I could have just sat back and waited, but I said, no, man, I've got to continue. I want to learn this part of it. And we got, we came to the point that honestly, Joshua, man, we built a, like a pretty good empire selling short sales, man. I mean, some of these clients are still our present clients to this day. Now we're talking what 16 years later, because we were able to help them get out of that tough situation, buy another house. Some of them bought multiple properties already from us from back in 2006, 2007, so that was, I always say that we have to, we have to not be afraid to take that risk. We have to learn it. We have to go in there and dive deeper in. You have to have that, that, that mentality that you're going to be able to succeed in this business. And I think that's what it is. You have to be a self-driven person. You got to be, you can't wait on people to really give you the open book to do things. You have to go out there and learn them on your own. And that's what we did. And from there, we became so good at working on BPOs and short sales that I remember in 2000, late around mid 2009, Rebecca got her first assignment, her REO assignment. So we're like, what? We never did REOs before. But hey, we weren't afraid to take that task on and we jumped on it. And all of a sudden, I think in the last, in about a year and a half, within a year, year and a half, we probably did close to 100 REOs, man. Just her and I, just a two team, and we had no assistant or nothing. By the way, when they talk about you can't get things done, oh no, you can get things done, you know? And um, back then, they would, like, we had no systems, Joshua. That was the thing. We, you know, we, we came straight out of school, right into this independent brokerage that one of our partners owned, a great friend of ours. And we were never taught the systems how to correctly run systems, but we knew how to sell. We knew how to dive deeper into that. And it really, I truly, I, I really feel that at this moment that our success was really has become because of what we've done prior, you know, and what, we, what we're going to do moving forward and what I want to do with my team members moving forward and my organization. And even anyone that needs help, man, we open a book to them, man, because I think that it's important that we do share this because you just touched on it. Man, those that got licensed a year ago, man, you walking into the devil's nest right now, brother. You better learn this and you got to learn it real seriously. You got to go in there and not be afraid to get your hands dirty because it's time. The times are coming right now, you know? So, I'm yeah. Saying. Yeah. What What do you, just because, you know, we're, we're I mean, just from your statement right there, and, and I want to also, you know, go back into a few other things of adapting out of that market back, you know, yeah. but, you know, just, just because you just hinted on, um, you know, those that got licensed a year ago, like you're, you're, you're like, you know, you're in for, um, 
you know, a, I don't want to say a treat, <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, but look, I mean, you, you know, with this too, because I don't want anybody that's watching and listening to, to be afraid or get discouraged. I mean, there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with worry, you know, because like I'm, I believe in a healthy element of worry, like be worried to the point where you take massive action, where you pay attention, that you work on yourself, that you bust your ass off. Um, um, you know, I mean, like guys like me and you and, and Rebecca, like we figured it out, you know? Um, so, so, you know, anybody that's watching, listening, you can figure this out. It's going to take a shit ton of work and, and a lot of effort and energy. And, and also though, too, there wasn't podcasts like this when you and I got started. So exactly. <laughs> you guys can, you exactly. guys can... we, we never had any of this out. Social media was just being introduced back then. Remember that? Like MySpace and all this stuff. But you know what? Just to touch on that, I'm glad you said that. Don't be afraid, man. You know what? Align yourself with the right people. Look for a mentor, man. There's a lot of mentors out there. Like myself, I'm not afraid to really teach anyone, man, and help anyone because I truly believe that at the career that we're in right now that I'm in personally, Joshua, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to leave a legacy for those agents that are following up, even the ones that got licensed in 2021. It's like one of the things that I said on stage was, was what people really resonated with was, I can't take nothing to my grave, man. No money, no house, no nothing. But what I could take is the legacy that I left in my real estate community. That's what matters to me. I think a lot of times people forget what we're here for. And that are, we're here for a purpose, and that's to give back and help those in need. So... My real estate community, no matter what you guys are going through, I'm here for you guys. Whatever you need, you guys can reach out to me. Whatever you need, I'm here. So don't be afraid. Keep moving forward, you know? Yeah, I love it, man. So what what are your thoughts on, you know, um, uh, because like what we're experiencing right now, I mean, there's obviously some differences than that we saw, you know, leading up to the great financial crisis, but there's also insane amounts of similarities, you know, I mean, where do you, where do you think that this is is heading? And do you, do you think that this is going to be another great financial crisis again, or, or worse, or not as bad? Like, like, what are your no? I know, an understanding that nobody has a crystal ball. Like, these are yeah. just us just speculating here. Yeah. Um. Do I see the 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 massive uh, financial crisis from two thousand six two thousand eight? I don't think so, but I do see financial crisis. And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the debt that our country is in right now, man. You know, I mean, and this, this, I think to me, that's the scariest part. As you can see, the market is trending up and down, up and down. Interest rates are going up one day, dropping another day. And I think that that unstability of just like that roller coaster ride, I really feel like we're going to see a lot of this for the next couple of years, you know? I do I see the decrease massive decreases in home I know I said no we're gonna have what I see is a a decrease on home value but not to the point of 2006 2010 and all that we'll probably see the average increase of a home like three percent instead of being 12 20 percent like it has been oh man I'm sorry my dog is Uh, you're good you're good and um so I think that that's what I'm looking at right now that now, like you just said, I'm not a crystal ball reader. I'm just, I'm just going by what I've seen back when we came into the business. But at the same token, yes, I do see it, you know, and that's why I feel like right now is your time to scale your business. You know, we we learned this from hard times that we went through, Rebecca and I. And I, I learned, I implemented my systems six, seven years ago, and that's why we're able to scale our business now in different varieties when it comes to the real estate industry. I'm talking from sellers to buyers to referrals to whatever it is, you know, just continue on and on. And uh, yeah, man, I think honestly, Joshua, I, I really do see that we are going to go through a financial crisis. To what level? I can't, I'm not a, an economist or anything, but I can tell you this right now, we need to be prepared because it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. You can see it already, man, you know, I mean, you, you can't see it on, you can see it from the data. Data specifies everything. And if you and I, we can, we can look back at this data, 2006 data to what we're looking at right now, but those agents really don't have that knowledge of it. So learn more about that. Learn more and study, study the market back in 2006. You can always go back to that and learn all the trends that happened back then from six to where we are right now. And you can see this. It's normal, man. Um, you know, and, uh, Going back to what 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 they're talking about the recession. Listen, man, we're in the recession already, guys. Josh, you knows it already. Joshua, you know you can see this already, and we have to be prepared for what's coming right now. What's here right now in front of us, and I can tell you to all the new agents that I came in or prior to that, 
align yourself with great leaders, find great mentors, go out there and find someone that's really going to help you build your business. But, but we go back to this and I touch on this. You got to be ready and hungry to learn because a lot of times mentors and leaders and coaches are out there willing to pour into you guys. But it all comes from you. Like you just said, adaptability. You got to be able to adapt. Stop looking at all these investment side of it. Learn the business before you go into that. You know, um, one of the things that I've learned is that on the investment side, I didn't know the investment side in the beginning of my career, Joshua. I did it, you know. But as you learn in your business of, okay, how to adjust to uh, hedge funds, how to adapt to the, the buyers with all the money coming in and the sellers. Right? So I think as you go along and you learn more about the business, that when you, that's how you can adapt to what's happening right now. So my important is you need to dive deep into the education side of it, man, what's happening and educate yep. yourself moving forward. Yep. Yeah. Couldn't agree more, man. I love what you talked about, about, studying your past market you know um you, you, in order to know where we're going you got to know where we've been you yeah. know and and history and i don't know who originally said it but history doesn't always repeat itself no. but it always rhymes you know so yeah. uh, uh uh you know so um yeah i mean you know know what that looks like um and and pay attention uh you know because well and, and we'll get into that later but you know i'm curious dude of you know, because again, we we're in the market at the same time. We took a lot of the same paths. You know, I had strong traditional business. Then it, be, you know, got heavy into short sales, heavy into REO. You know, and then then you know, hedge funds came in and pivoted there. And you know, in in my market, um, I saw so many of these. Not a ton, but there was you know a, a, a lot of big hitters that were doing insane amount of short sales, insane amount of REO. And just as like I saw a lot of these traditional business top producers when the market shifted that they couldn't shift with it. And then all of a sudden I never heard from them again. Yeah. Well, I saw a lot of these top REO agent short sell agents that were some 500 units, thousand units on a yearly basis. And then when the market corrected, I haven't seen their name since, you know, so how did you guys then shift out of that? You know, cause you process so many short sales, you're doing a shit ton of REOs. Well, at some point that, you know, slowed down and then eventually kind of like, how did you shift back, uh, uh, you know, to um, spare? What I've learned is uh, I started once you study the market and you can see the trend, it's time to, to make an adjustment. Like right now, we just seen it about six months ago. We knew that this market was shifting. So we pivot back to sellers. We go deep into seller leads and um the same thing happens when we're coming out of the REO business. You can see the tradition coming back in. That's when a lot of the hedge funds were coming back and starting to buy more properties and everything. So it's about learning and studying the market. You can see the, I mean, you can see the trend. It's right in front of you. Sometimes we just, we just put a blind eye to it, but it's right in front of us. You can see the trend. And once you see that all of a sudden the buyers are coming back, these hedge funds, these big companies are coming in. That's a buyer's market. You know that it's coming in. Once you see that they're slowing down, you move into the seller's market. We've seen it back in January, Joshua, this year, 2022. We've seen it. We're like, uh-uh, we got to prepare for this because something's about to happen. When I started noticing the financial crisis that the United States is going through right now, and just to, um, I was like, I got with my trade marketing offer. I said, oh, we're changing this. We're changing this real quick. We're, we're switching into seller leads. And that's how we've been able to adjust to the market that we're in right now, because now is the time for you guys to look at those sellers that you sold properties to three, four, five years ago that are looking either to downsize or upgrade and take advantage of that opportunity. Everyone's talking about being last year or the year prior. No, this is the year right now. And I'm going to tell you why, because we realized that some of those people that wanted to sell two or three years ago or a year ago that there were multiple situations that they were like, nah, man, you know what? I'll get 40, 50,000 for my house. But then I got to go put a hundred thousand more into a house, uh, uh overbid someone by a hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's not the market that we in right now. Now is your opportunity that you're still going to get a great ROI for your property on the selling side. And you're going to get, you're going to get a great deal on the buyer side because you can see it. Properties are not sitting in the market. I know in my market right now, those properties are not off the market two or three days. Now I'm seeing 15, 20, 30 days on the market. Why? Because you can see that. Study your market, guys. Learn, learn what's happening in your own backyard. Each one of us have up big opportunities. And what I mean by that is 
Go to your local board. They put a, a newsletter out every single month. Study that. Look at that every single day or every week. And you can see the sales listing size, how they drop it. Buyer size, how they're dropping. I mean, you could just, if you see all these numbers, Joshua, that's how you're able to become that market expert. Keep looking at that. Keep focusing on what's happening and open the eye to everything because I think that we put a roadblock on ourselves when we really uh, hold it, hold ourselves back from really doing something bigger than what we know it could be. I think afraid when you're when you're scared that that scarcity mindset really holds you back, man. Seriously, that's one of the things that I never did. I'm like, listen, win or lose, I'm gonna take the risk and I'm gonna move forward on it. You know? That's yeah. What I, do. I mean, the, the the brilliant part about real estate is it's always moving. It's always yeah. trading hands. You know, it, it, the only thing that that differentiates is who's buying it and who's selling it. And, yeah. and, you know, maybe the reasons as to why they're buying and selling it. And so you saw that shift. You were like, okay, hey, look, you know, in, in 2020, 2021, you know, everybody's moving to Florida, massive migration coming in. That was like, okay. And, and, and maybe you were still going after sellers there, but they're okay. Buyers are just buying up everything. Well, then yeah. we saw that halting. Okay. Now we, we know that listing inventory is going to grow. You know, we maybe see it's the peak. So then we can go out there for, you know, because, you know, too, with having a fiduciary duty to our communities, to our clients, yep. if we have sellers that want to get top dollar of the property, yep. you know, like if they don't sell today, they're not going to get as much over the next maybe decade, you know, right? Um, or who, who knows how long those time frames are. Exactly. Um, so, so you start pivoting to that. Um, and, and I love it, man, because you're, you're just always looking at who the market is good for. Yeah. Knowing that it's, you know, so whether that be, you know, buyers, sellers, whether that be short sales, whether that be REO, whether that be hedge funds, you know, and, and, you know, throughout your career. So then I know everybody's probably dying to know um, how, how are you going out there? What's working for you to get these listings right now today? Okay. Well, we did back in January, we started studying the market and this is what I did, Joshua. I started, we don't deep in deep, deep, deep into my referral database. And also most importantly, my lead generation system that I'm, use, I'm utilizing at this moment. By the way, we, my wife and I, we made the initiative that we're no longer back at seven years ago, almost no, six years ago, we made the initiative that we're no longer going to support Zillow. <laughs> we never did. We just, that, that was just something that we wanted to do. As a matter of fact, my presentation was about that, how we were able to scale our business 15 times without Zillow, you know? And, um, and not nothing against Zillow, you know, they're great. And I have a lot of respect for them, but I felt that we wanted to build our own brand. And remember what Zillow does is they leverage our own, our own brand, our own product that we're putting out there to sell it to someone else. So we realized that, that we're competing with our own partners in our own backyard back then. And I was like, no, we, my wife said enough's enough, man. And what we did was we started focusing more on the social media platforms and that's how we were able to scale our business. Uh, we've been doing, we've been working with Whitley. I mean, you and I both know that for the last five years, we go deeper into that platform because we realized something about that platform that not many other platforms are offering is that the education, how you can teach yourself how to work something, how to do these things, these ads, how to build out um, retargeting ads, how to really dive deeper into a system that really is brand diagnostic to you. This is your brand. So when I started realizing and learning this system, I realized that, whoa, this thing could, could get pretty big, you know? So, man, I tell you, for, for the first year, I'll be honest with you, I never really was intentional about learning it that well. But moving to uh, second year, moving forward now to like now, I really dove deeper and I realized that, oh, this is this this could work. And we were able to scale our business in the last five years by 20% using this and understanding the importance of being in front of your audience. Because one thing that's important is you need to know your ideal audience. When you're able to dive down deeper in and understand who your audience is, you're able to communicate with them. What I mean by communicate is you're able, you're able to have that connection from them, even though they don't know you, but they're open. Once they open up those ads, they understand that you're, you're giving them something that they want to hear. You know, that, that 11, you know, when you're able to grab that person, the first five seconds, you grab, them. you already know that, you know? So when we were able to understand the importance of understanding your audience, we were able to really bring so much value to our consumer, which our product, the product that we're putting out there that nowadays people know who we are, Joshua. I travel everywhere. I'll be honest with you. People's like, oh my God, I see, I see you all over my social media and everything. 
I respect them. I don't know them, but I respect them. And I still hung up on them. I was like, hey, how are you? Pleasure to meet you. But it was because we were able to adapt. Like you, we go back to adapt. We were able to adapt to something that we knew in our hearts that we wanted to do. And we're going to moving forward. This is exactly what it is. And I think the biggest mistake, and hear me out right now, the biggest mistake that the local real estate agent do is they try to do too much, too much at one time. Learn that one system, become a master at that. Then you can move on to the next system. Once you master that, then you move on to the next system. I think a lot of times, including myself, because I learned from mistakes, that was me. I was trying to do everything. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. At the end of the day, I wasn't doing anything. So I was able to say, you know what? I'm going to focus on this and I'm going to scale this thing to the point that I'm going to build something that's big and, and, and sustainable. Then I can move on to the product number two. So that's how we were able to really build our business. And right now, what we do is we do a lot of text message blasts, by the way. One of the biggest mistakes that we um, I see, I'm seeing and I'm hearing from other realtors is that they're doing these text message blasts in like books. You can't do that. What we do is we we write, we send it straight to our database, Joshua. So instead of you really send it out there that you can get sued or something by other people, we send it to our database. People within our database are already searching. So what we do is we a simple text, and I can share it with you later. And you know you can share it with your audience that just a simple text that we send out to our sellers and our buyers. Basically, hey, this is Josue from the Solo Legacy Group. You know what? I got a four-bedroom, three-bath home that's really in a desirable area. I noticed that you were in my database looking in this area. Would this be something that you'd be interested in? That's it. That's it. Hey, feel free to contact us. All of a sudden, they get in our, our platform and say, hey, I'm interested in it. That's how we're getting leads. That's how we get into seller leads because some of these are sellers that were already looking to either downsize or, or, or upgrade, you know, and... It's just about accountability, contact, 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 follow up, follow up, follow up. And we're sending this only to a third of my database. That's a, that's a big uh, you, you, uh, pro tip right there. Do not send it to your whole entire database. We're sending them out every two to three weeks to like four or 5,000 only. Because if you do this to your whole entire database, people are going to unsubscribe. You don't want people unsubscribing for your database for nothing. So that's one of the things that we've learned through like... Uh, running beta, you know, data testing and all that, that when we were able to scale back and send it to like four to 8,000 at a time, it's worked a lot better. And the ratios, and man, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, love it. And, and those, any of you that are watching and listening, I'm going to, if you scroll below, I'll have a link for this too. Um, you know, Jose, you mentioned Whitley um, and, uh, you know, our, our mutual good friend, Grant Wise, who I've had on the podcast multiple times um, and uh, recently had him on where he talks, not just about Whitley. Whitley is a, is a company that can help. It, it, it is an easy way for you to run your own Facebook ads, but then they also have services where they can help you do it and plug into the right funnels and a lot of education. Um, but uh, on that podcast that I ran with, just in case you want to go into Facebook ads manager and run your own, you know, Grant really spelled down and went through, okay, well, here's our framework. Here's what we do. So whether you want to use a platform like Whitley or just do it on your own through ads manager, Grant was, you know, um, um, you know, great in that interview of, of just really breaking down what those strategies are. So I'll have a link below if you guys are interested in watching that. Um, so then with that, you know, when it comes to the actual Facebook ads, you know, and, 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 um, and, 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 and I'm sure that this is a combination of ads plus your kind of organic game, you know, yeah. um, you know, can you kind of break down, you know, some of the things that have been working? I mean, you mentioned retargeting, you know, I think because it, it, so many people just think of, okay, your basic real estate ad, you know, here's a home list or here's a CMA ad. And then they just, they get the lead, but then it stops there. Or, you know, like, like what, what have you found to really be working? You know, cause obviously this is what you're doing today. Um, you know, what, what kind of messaging are you finding? It seems to be working the best. I'll share some of the, the case management series that I just did. The last one has been very successful. When you send out this home list, we follow it follow it with three different retargeting ads. And the first target ad is, for instance, we talk about, I'll bring one of my past clients and, I, and I'll show them how simple it was for him to sell his home and simply do a 30 day, um, a 30 day post occupancy. And I was able to find him another home. So I put him on camera. See, you have to leverage your clients, leverage the people that you took care of already, because they'll be happy to get on camera, right? And do this for you. You know, I did, that's one of the series. And if you click on that one, then you're going to get another series about 
one of my uh, lending partners, right? And that one was about the, the cash offer product that they have. So for instance, Joshua, I come to you and I sit down with you and I say, hey, you know what, Mr. Joshua, I know that right now you're looking into, uh, into uh, listing your property. So I'm going to give you three different options that I can give, that I can show you at the moment. So this is right here. This is a cash offer product that's basically, we have investors right now that are come in and purchase your property and be able, you're able to stay in the property and so we're able to find you another property and they'll give you market value for the property. Or we can go the traditional way. We can list your property. This is how much the commission is. This is what we're going to be expecting from it. Or, invite, or, or the third one is, well, we have this one. Let's, let's be honest with you. We leverage offer pad and all that stuff. So this, I offer three different products. So now you're going into a listing presentation, not only with one product, you're going with three products. So how do you think that seller is going to feel like, whoa, this guy's bringing me three different things, scenarios here. So he's talking about his product, you know? The third one is, I'm on, I'm on, I'm speaking on how I was able to help one of my clients tradition from a, 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 a smaller home into a bigger home. And I, and I basically send the details within a minute guys. Cause I do what I focus on right now is I try to focus on one to two minute reels right now. And my, my videos are just short videos right now. Cause they are, listen guys, if you want to build something, go on short videos. Cause this is the niche right now, short videos is you grab their attention and they stay on it and you're good. So when doing, when I, when we, when we realized doing this case study that Grant and I did that when we did those retargeting guys at smaller videos, the, the ROI has been bigger. And it's about bringing a series of videos. You got one series. When, when you click on one video, the, the other one following is going to be the same message, but a different aspect of the first video. So it's about having a structured system of how you're going to be able to retarget these people, Joshua. Not just throw a video out there saying, hey, this is Joshua again. People don't want to hear that. Bring them value. Bring them something. Bring them something that you've done already that they want. They're probably right now feeling that not unsure that they can't sell. But then you come in there, you bring one of your past clients and talk about how smooth the transition to Soto Legacy Group is. Do you think they're going to click on it? Absolutely, they're going to click on it. They want to learn more about that. So that's how we've been able to really sustain the uh, the seller's market moving forward. Yeah. So so to kind of break that down, it sounds like you're starting with. Um, a buyer ad with a home list. Yep. That's a lead gen ad. They opt in with their lead. As soon as they opt in, now you have a series of videos that is in a retargeting funnel. That yep. might be video view ads or reach ads, you know? Um, and the cool thing I love about video view and reach ads is they're like, you know, one to two cent views. They're, they're pennies on the dollar. The lead yep. gen ad is the one that, you know, can when I say costly, you know, five bucks, you know, like it, it isn't that much, right? Um, yeah. This is the freaking Zillow lead, right? You know? But then it's okay. So they opt in as a lead. As soon as they become a lead, you have your custom audience to set up where now they see video one. Um, um, when they watch 10 seconds or 25% or however you have that set up, then once they finish that, they stop seeing that video. Now they get shown the next video until yeah. they engage with that one. Then they get the next one. Um, at any time in there, and it sounds like maybe you have a series of three or four different videos that you have them see, yeah. um, um, and, and maybe it's maybe that's inaccurate. Maybe it's always indefinitely ongoing. But um, at, at, at some point in there, like, is are you relying on your other your text messages, your phone call follow up, or you know, do you have it set up with any of those ads where they're booking an appointment with you right from the ad? Yeah, um, they're booking an appointment um, right from the ads and the retargeting ads. But most importantly, we have um, what well, we our, our ISA is doing AI. We have um, they do a lot of AI, so they're the ones that follow up with the text messages and the emails and the phone calls. So it's about as soon as they click on that, man, you're gonna get you're gonna get that phone call, that text message automatically. It's automated. So now. Now you have some type of system in place, you know, that this is where we go back to the systems, having these systems in place that are actually working for you while you're out there showing property. So all this is all automated. It's all AI. So by the time that lead comes in and they, they really click and they sign up, that's automatically picked up by our Whitley Assist, which is our ISA department. They're actually following up with the text messages and um, the emails and the phone calls. Once they set up the appointment, what I had, what I implemented to my product is I have a CRM manager and his responsibility is, is to hold the Whitley, uh, the, the ISA's responsible, uh, uh, accountable 
and my and my buyer's agents accountable because once that lead comes in and it's already approved, my CRM manager oversees it, distribute it to the to my buyer's agents, but also ho they're holding the ISA accountable and my buyer's agents accountable. See, that's one of the things is that I think. If there's something that I implemented into my system that was golden was my CRM manager because he oversees the whole entire operation now. Now, I he only reports to me, Joshua. So he's the one that's reporting to me directly and saying, hey, he's the one that's giving me all the data. He's the one that's doing all the follow-up. He's the one that's following up on the appointments and all set. So with him, his responsibility is majority is to me and following and all the follow-ups, holding everyone accountable. So it's important that you do have someone there that you can rely on 100% because we go back to how many leads are being not, not being touched on. That's the importance. You know, everyone's talking about, oh, this is not a great lead. Really, man, let's get on this, man. When you do, are you touching 7715? Are you calling them seven times? Are you texting them seven times? You know, it's the 7715 market that that's what we utilize a lot on that it's worked. So there's, I truly believe there's no bad leads out there. We just got to work them. You know what I'm saying? Some leads may take a year. Some of them may take two years. I have leads there that have been in my, my CRM for five years, but it doesn't mean I still treat them the same way, like a new lead to an old lead. It's that their structure, I structure them very different when it comes to the contacting part of it, you know, by the ISH. Yeah, I, I do. I, no, I couldn't agree more, man. I, I always say that no, you know, there's no such thing as a bad lead source, only bad follow up. And and well, I get it. You know, the vast majority don't have systems and processes in place that, you know, uh, allow, you know, to because it, it is a lot, man. And if you don't have if you don't spend the time to set your CRM up correctly and and to to have those systems and those processes in place, you know, it's, it's so easy for shit to drop through the cracks. And, and but when you have it set up. You know, not only is it that much easier to do it, follow up and follow up effectively, but then as you've done, it's that much easier to delegate it, inspect what you expect, you know, and so forth. And, and I love that, you know, you're, you're getting, you're focusing on listings and going after these listings by actually going after buyers initially, you know, and it's always been, that's my favorite ideal client. Now, my favorite ideal client is whichever the, wherever the most business is. In Absolutely. Yep. You know, however, if, if it was a perfect world, um, my favorite ideal client is either upsizers or downsizers, you know, cause you get, you get a buy and a sell. It's the same acquisition costs, you know? Um, um, and that's what you guys are targeting and just absolutely slaying it with. Yeah. And know your data, man. Yeah. I mean, like right now, you know, I just looked at, I just sat down with my CRM manager and, uh, my CMO and then listen, I mean, I'm a, from con from lead from entering the system to closing, man, I'm spending 347 per lead. That's it, $247 per lead. Now, guys, the average commission right now is like eight to ten thousand. So do the numbers, man. You know, so that's not bad, you know, especially if you're able to if you if you can really represent them on a buyer side too. Now, now you're doubling that. So it's about studying and knowing your data too. You got to go in there and really hold yourself accountable as a team leader. See, like I try to meet with my uh my data and my data guy once a week, or I talk to him and he's in my CRM and he tells me, Hey, what's going on with this? What's happening here? You know, let's let's make these adjustments. And listen, even if you're a new agent, guys, don't be afraid to like really learn and something that you have to have some type of system. I'm not telling you to go out there and spend $2,000 on a system or whatever it is. You may not have that right now, but build some type of system that you can follow from the beginning and then build yourself up to, you know, getting these CRMs, these bigger CRMs and all that. Because I know I started that way, Joshua. So, but I know that I had a system, even though I didn't have a CRM, but I had systems in like my system that I was just following through paperwork because back then it wasn't that easy. I had a lot of paperwork, a lot of, a lot of uh, freaking database, you know, and, uh, but I still have those clients. They're still in my database. I follow them up. I follow up with them. And it's important that right now you follow up even with your past clients. I will say that right now. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it's your point. I mean, I think so many people get overwhelmed when it comes to system processes because they think it's got to be this complex thing. No, it can be a no. Google Drive spreadsheet. You know? exactly. Um, exactly. I mean, that can get tough as you're managing a larger team, you know, but but to start with, I mean, that that's, and, and man, I know some team leaders that do very well that operate everything off of spreadsheets, you know, well, so. You, you, you want to hear something? We just bought over a partner, 32 years in a business, massive top producer. 
she runs everything over Google spreadsheet, man. Yeah, I could not believe it. I was like, what? <laughs> like, I mean, you know, 32 years, that's a lot of data there, man. But she says it's worked for us. I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, so, hey. Yeah, if, if somebody, you know, because because I mean, the majority of the industry and I don't know what the majority of those that are watching and listening to this, what their business makeup is. Um, but but just with the assumption of that, you know, the majority of the industry are, are individual agents that, you know, don't have a team um, are on a team, but maybe aspiring to create a team. You know, what advice, but they're hearing what you what you're doing with all of this. And they're like, well, yeah, you know, Jose, man, yeah, I mean, you guys. You got somebody running, you know, running the ads. So yeah, you got to show up and shoot the video, but you got somebody running the ads. You got, then when those leads come in, you got somebody working those, you got, so, so somebody setting the appointment. So you just show up, conduct the appointment, you know, I mean, you got this well-oiled machine, but for somebody that's just starting out, that is, you know, just a, a, a you know, C- CEO chief, everything officer, <laughs> yeah, right? as, as we all were at some point, right. you know, h- how would you recommend that um you know they start to build this like meaning you know um in the beginning they're doing it all but then you know eventually they're going to get busy and they need to start delegating out certain pieces of this you know what would you recommend if somebody was looking to build an efficient model like you have like where to start i i would start off our our first hire was a transaction coordinator I tell you right now, you know, you're, you're, you're either worth $20 or you're worth $2,000 an hour. So I recommend that's what we've done and it's worked out perfectly for us. You know, the TC has been phenomenal right now. And then second one is admin, someone to work hand in hand with you, that that person is going to be holding responsible for all your appointments, setting up your appointments, your calendar, following up with everything, you know, and third of all, if you do not have the income or the financials to really hire someone to help you with this, then you learn out there. There's a lot of opportunities out there that you can learn these systems on your own, believe it or not, like I did. I I learned them on my own. I paid, it was like, I think it was like less than a thousand dollars the whole year. And they gave you the whole entire platform to study these things. So, hey, you know what? What better way? You know what? You want to learn the system, then learn it first, and then you can provide it to someone else. And I truly believe in that, Joshua, that when you're able to learn something for yourself, like you learn it the way you want it, then it's easier for you to move it on to someone else and pass it over to someone else, you know? So that's what I would do, you know? And uh, that's what we're looking at, you know, right now. That's what I recommend. That you would do, the first hire has to be a TC automatically i would recommend a tc i would recommend an admin afterwards once you get to that level and um and we you know and then and then third of all when you get that busy you need to your next hire would be a buyer's agent automatically you need a buyer's agent that way you can focus on the other part the other aspect of the business which is the sellers you know once you get to that level, then you can, depending on how much uh, uh, product you're coming in or how much uh, leads are coming in and how many are, are you're converting, then I would hire a second one, you know? So that's where we're at right now. You know, we, I, um, I run my, my oper- our operation is I'm the sole listing agent. Sometimes they'll co-list with me if that's their leads, but the majority of it's, uh, it's more with my CRM manager handling everything, our C chief marketing officer running everything in, in structure as far as the data and everything. And uh, and my, my three buyers agent, four buyers agents that I have, they're, they're just running everything else after that. But I tell you this right now, if there was a, a golden hire in my business, TC was like, that was just like amazing, man. That was the best because I was able to push that responsibility, all the paperwork to them and just focus on building this out, you know? So I would yeah. recommend that way. When when you become that, when you start building it till you get a little busier and busier, listen, you can pay a TC 250, 300 per file at closing guys. That's it. So think about it. That $300, you don't have to pay that till that file closed. So you have all this time to focus on continue building your business. So go from there. Then when you, when you need, when you can't, when your calendar is getting off whack, then you hire an admin. You have to hire that person to handle everything else that you need, you know? So that's what I recommend right now, Joshua. Yep. Yep. No, I, I couldn't agree more, dude. I, every, every team leader that I've ever, 
had that conversation with has said the same exact thing. And the team leaders or broker owners that I know that hired agents before having their, their kind of foundation with their admin team has lived to regret it. You know, so yeah, yeah awesome advice, man. Um, now I want to want to kind of pivot here and, and transition into you know earlier on in the podcast you talked a lot about giving back, yeah. and um, you know you are somebody that you know I mean you know like we were both you know I mean I, may, I can't speak for you you know so maybe you did but I know I didn't get a speaking fee to go on stage, you know, at, at Grant's event. Um, and, and I was blessed and honored. He's a good friend and, and, you know, he's a giver as well, you know? Um, and I think that the, you know, the industry needs to know this and understand this, that um, uh, uh, it's like, you know, I paid for my own flight, paid for my own to hotel, paid for time away from my business and my family to go out and, and speak and share with, with a, you know, group of, you know, under several hundred realtors, that are in that room. Um, and, and, you know, like you and I are in stage, like we wouldn't pitch anything. We didn't sell them and have them go to the back of the, like, it was just an, an area to give. And, and for those who watch and listen, when you go to most conferences, you know, and you see all those people on stage, that is usually the case, you know, within our yeah. industry. Um, and it's because, you know, like we all wouldn't be where we're at if people didn't pour into us. And, you know, we know that, but can you speak to, cause I know that not only are you doing a lot of these real estate events, but you're also very involved with NAR and, um, um, you know, can you speak to the, the, the power that of giving back the importance of it and, and, you know, um, you know, what that means to you and, and also, I mean, how, how it's on a selfish level, how it's also even benefited you. You know, I think that's, that's something that we implemented six years ago, Joshua, like it, we had to once we learned of this organization that we're highly, uh, you know, embedded into, we've done a lot of, um, we've been part of them. And, and I'll tell you this right now, they, I, I tell you right now, they've blessed me more than I feel like I've blessed them at the moment, man, you know, because I was able to give back and pour into this organization that I truly believe in, you know, the Hispanic community and um, really learn the importance of their, what their, what their values are and what, what their propositions are and what they want to give back to help our Hispanic community, our Hispanic home buyers. Man, once I, once I was able to understand the importance of that, you know, when you're able to go to DC and advocate for your people and help them, you know, get, you know, help them with the, the, um, the interest rates and help them how, you know, right now that we had the lowest, um, the lowest home ownership in the last five years until um, this was implemented, uh, until our CEO implemented the importance of really giving back to our community, but most importantly, building your empire too, man, because let me tell you when, when I was able to understand the principles that he created, because when you think about it, when the market crashed, the Latinos, the Latino as a whole had the hardest hardship and losses of every ethnic group in the USA. So when that really resonated on me, because I was one of those, I was one of them, you know what I'm talking about? So I understand the hardship that we all had to go through, but the more you learn more about this organization, the more you want to give back wholly. What I mean by that is from the heart, you give back, you pour into them, you know, so I really started diving deeper in and I, I got invited to be part of the local organization here in, my, uh, in, in Orlando. And I took that opportunity and I learned so much about it. I started as a, a, a committee and then I moved myself into the board. And in 2017, I became president of the local chapter, you know, and, and, and the more and more I learned more about it, the more and more I wanted to give back to our community, you know, and Rebecca, my wife, you know, you met her too. She followed, and when she learned more about it, she was the president in 2018. We were able to take this organization from like 100 agents to over three, 400 agents in, in two or three years. Most importantly, we were able to build something that was sustainable, man, you know? And uh, like our CEO said, we built something that's like a war chest. I think it'll just continue growing on more and more. So, and it was not about us. It was about the importance of giving back and bringing everyone, a community as a whole, to really work together and give back to our our real estate community, our 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 community as a whole for Latinos, and this doesn't have to be all Latinos. Even though we're with the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals, but we 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 help everyone, you know. And most importantly, he he realized that there was something missing within the organization. And in 2015, he implemented what we call the Dark Ten Principles, and basically these terms principle is that. 
these are principles that he created that he he wanted to build a hundred millionaires within our organization and sure enough we surpassed that in the last six years you know and he realized that you know what we're not gonna we're not gonna go through this again what we went through in those hard times we're at a 51 percent ratio right now in hispanic home ownership which is huge right now you know it's a wealth it's a wealth building principles that he created that man let me tell you something i implemented into my business and my and even my agents and i try to get show them hey this is important how you have to learn how to put 20 percent down or you know 20 percent away from your you know for your investment you touched on that a little bit on stage and it's important how you got to prepare yourself for what's coming it's it's just these principles just really really resonated on on, uh, on my rebecca and i that let me tell you, right at this day, right now, you know, we have a death free life, man, because of what we've gone through, you know, and we, we learn from, and most importantly, how we're able to give back to our community of what our experiences has been and what we've gone through. And when you're able to open your heart and give back to your community, man, God blesses you tenfold, man, seriously. But it's about, it's about just giving back you know, the right way to do it, you know, you know, respectfully and, and wholeheartedly. And our business has scaled like, um, <laughs> I can't even tell you. And it's scaled for the fact of the relationship that we were able to build in the organization and just work together and learn the same way you and I had this, this dinner. We learned so much of each other. We talked about just family and, you know, things that we've gone through. Same thing is, same thing goes with the organization. And, um, you know, that's one of the things I'm able to, you know how they say you got to get in these rooms, we got in these rooms and honestly we built, we learned so much from each other in the sense of him, how this, this guy's doing 3,200 transactions and I'm sitting in the room with this guy and I'm learning how he's able to scale his business and he's able to go through hard times, but able to overcome them. And these are, you know, this is what, this is the opportunities that we all have to take that like you just touched on. I didn't get paid for anything that we just did in that conference, but you know what I got paid it that I did my job. What God called us to do at that moment. That's to give back. It's time to give back. And to me, that's my fulfillment. Cause I know you can't, you can't count on dollar signs, but you can count on everything else, man. After that, everything comes, you know? So and, you know, when you're able to lead from your heart and your heart controls your whole entire body, when your heart is pure and everything comes together, you know, so that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, I, I've been blessed to uh, be able to sit down and have several conversations with billionaires and, and some of my mentors that are, you know, one of my mentors who I had on the podcast, you know, several years ago, um, Ryan Blair, who, yeah. you know, exited from his last company, you know, a couple of years ago for 792 million before the age of 40, you know, he created and exited from over a billion dollars of, of, of businesses. And, you know, um, um, I mean, just amazing, you know, like from, from a financial standpoint, a business standpoint, from an outside looking in, you're like, okay, that's impressive. That's amazing. You know, most people can't even fathom that, but to most that aren't, you know, in, in a successful financial position, it looks as if, you know, or most people have this perception that those that are successful are just greedy and, and, you know, just care about money. And, and I can just tell you from my experience, of spending, you know, a lot of time, you know, with some people that are way more successful than I am, you know, they are some of the most like big hearted leading from a place of contribution, Absolutely. you know, level that, that, um, is un that I've seen to be unmatched, you know, and, and that's what I truly believe that led to their success and continues to lead to their success, you know, because they're, they're so focused on how do I, how do I impact lives? How do I change the world? How do I do my part? And then the financial success that follows is, you know, whether you want to call it their reward, you know, and yeah, they put, they made smart moves and, you know, whatever, but it's the opposite of this, you know, perception of greed, you know, I've yet, not yet to meet one of them that I've been able to be blessed to, to spend time with that is, is greedy, you know, and I'm not saying that they don't like money and don't understand that it's a powerful, necessary resource um, and a tool, you know, whatever, but it, 
you know, it's, it's that contribution piece. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I, and I love that you said that because this is exactly what it is, that contribution and your report. You know, I think sometimes we get intimidated by someone like that, but you'd be surprised how open heartedly they really are, man. Once you get in those rooms and you talk to them and you'd be surprised how intrigued they are to hear your story. Sometimes they don't even want to talk about their stories. They want to hear your stories. And, and to me, that means this shows their character, who they really are, you know, and how important it is for them to hear your story and see how they can help you or what they've done in their business, how, how they can give you that, that, that little nugget that you may just need at that moment to help you, you know, and that's why it's important for us to really, really go in there and just pour into our community because you never know, man, there's, there's a lot of opportunities out there. And when this opportunity came and I seen that lineup and Grant called me, I'm like, yeah, I'm in. I mean, <laughs> because I wanted, what's important to me was to get in that room. I wanted to learn who Joshua Smith was, even though I seen him all the time in podcasts and spend time with Sanid and all these other uh, powerful leaders that you really respect and, you know, and really want to collaborate with and kind of get to know on a personal level. To me, that's, a, that's, that's fulfilling. That's my fulfillment, you know, yeah. just to, learn, to sit there and be in those rooms and just learn off each other. That's, that's all worth it right there. Yep. 100% man. So I, I know we're going long on time here, but just a couple last questions here for you. Um, you know, so you guys have, you know, had this amazing career, continue growth with this, you know, I mean, what, what do you guys have a, you know, a, a long-term vision, you know, as an example of like, what, what do you guys see this going in the next five, 10, 20 years? I mean, what, where, where do you want to be? Let's just say we're doing this podcast and, you know, I don't know, 2030, 2040, you know, like, like what is that long-term vision? All right. Within the um, within the team, I like to continue working on my top leaders and building them to become leaders and build other leaders within the organization, the team. Uh, that's what I'm talking. Within my organization, um, our, our other agents, I like to continue pouring back into the community and, and building that out more, help bringing more agents to to be able to sustain any type of market giving back to the community. I want to see this continue to be scalable, you know, and scalable not only on the solo legacy team side, but also on the growth side, as far as helping more real estate agents, you know, bringing them into our organization and showing them how collaboration really helps build your business. And, you know, and not expecting anything back, man, just giving back, keep pouring out. Um, right now, we're on a mission right now to continue helping you know, we've been doing this for the last three years. You know, we went, we started off with four ages. Well, we're close to 400 ages nationwide in a couple countries right now. And we just want to continue bringing, giving back, Joshua. I want to, I want that 400 to be 800 the next, say, year, you know, and just, you know, and it's not about the numbers of what we're bringing back. It's more about bringing the value that we've learned through and bringing our partners in to help them build their business. Because if they're not, if they're, if we're not getting pouring back into their community, they're not going to want to be the part of this. So to me, it's important just to give, continue pouring back and seeing these numbers and helping these new real estate agents not be that 357,000 failures that we had in 2008. You understand? I don't want to see that number. I want to be able to, you know what? Let's maximize that number and double it, man. Keep bringing more agents on because they're coming. You know, we can't stop that. There's more agents signing up every single day. There's some leaving, but there's more coming, you know? Yeah. But that's what I'm looking at right now, just to continue giving back to the community and seeing these numbers rise and, and most importantly, seeing successful agents, man, being happy with the, with the career change that they've chosen, man, that, that, that means a lot to me. That's what I want to see, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and when you talk about your organization, because you've got your team, and then when you talk about the organization, uh, you're, you're with EXP, correct? That's correct. Yeah, and, and one thing that is, is really brilliant about that model and for those watching and listening, this is coming from an outsider. I'm not with EXP, you know, <laughs> um, but, but I'm so I'm just an observer. But one thing I, I do really respect and love about that model is, you know, everybody's got a vested interest in everybody else's success, you know, and whether that be whether they're in your downline or, 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 or not, um, you know, just, you know, because, um, you know, with the stocks and, and, you know, whatever it's, you know, there is that element that is unique to the rest of the industry. You know, um, and, um, you know, being able then to pour into, you know, all of these agents and not just be focused on just your team. Of course, you focus on your team, but you have all these, you know, other agents within the organization and those that are in your direct download that you can just continue to give, 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 pour into. And, and it allows an environment where you can all grow together. 
yeah, we're better together. That's the same. We're better together. You know, why not just and and it, and and I say this not to just be just biased towards the XP because we're here to we want to help everyone. You know, at the end of the day, we're here to help anyone, man. So don't be afraid just because you know we just had this event, this brand agnostic event in Houston, and we had different brokerages coming and everything, and they were like, wow, you know, this is pretty amazing what you guys have given back to the community. I'm like, well, this is who we are. This is how. At the end of the day you don't have to come over with us to really learn from us. You know what I'm talking about? You can just still be happy as long as your, your business is growing. And if we bring, we're able to bring some value to you guys, and at the end of the day, that's what we're satisfied with, man. We're happy with, man, that you were able to leave that, that conference right there with something that you could take back to your business and help it grow. So yep. we're good. Yep. Love it, man. So one last question for you, but before we jump into this last question, you know, for anybody that's watching, that's listening that wants to continue following on your success journey, you know, may, maybe they do uh, want to reach out to you to talk about opportunities with EXP. I also know that Rebecca has a, a book that she's <laughs> co-authored coming out, you know, and, and uh, uh, you know, we can maybe, you know, if you want to, you could talk about that or we can have a, a link to that. I'm excited for her book to come out, but like, what are the best places for people to, again, continue following you, to get in touch with you, or maybe if they have a referral for you. I mean, everybody and their mother seems to be moving to, to <laughs> yeah. Florida. So anybody's moving to the Orlando market, like where's the best places to do that at? Um, you can find, you can find me on Facebook, Josue Soto. Um, and then IG is underscore Josue underscore Soto. Um, and then we had, we wrote a book together called Married in Real Estate. So you can find the book on marriedinrealestate.com. By the way, that was the first book we wrote that during the pandemic. And we wrote that book in, in less than 90 days. So if anyone is thinking about writing a book, everything is possible, man. Put your mind to it. Uh, so you can go to marriedinrealestate.com and then we're uh, Married in Real Estate and IG. You can follow us. And uh, Rebecca is Rebecca Soto with two C's. Uh, uh, Rebecca. And she's the same way, underscore Rebecca, Soto Legacy. So uh, you can find her at IIG and uh, and uh, Soto Legacy Group, too. You can look us up at Soto Legacy Group on Facebook and in IG. So that's it, man. This is where we at. <laughs> and, and anybody that's watching, listening to make it super easy. And you guys, if you just scroll below, I'll make sure to have all those websites, all of those, their social media handles, you know, all that. So you can easily connect with uh, Josue and, and Rebecca. Um, so I kind of lied to you. I said I had one last question for you, but now that I didn't know about that first book, um, yeah. uh, it, I mean, what, what, what do you, you know, because seeing you guys both together and, and it wasn't just a dinner. I mean, we, you know, I saw you guys, you know, I don't know how long they have, I mean, but like, you know, 14 hours, you know, each day and, you know, um, um, and it, it, look, I, I, I understand that things don't come without their challenges and, and, you know, behind the scenes is, you know, could be, a, a, but from just a third party observer, you know, it just appears, I mean, you guys, I mean, the way that you, you treat each other, the way that you speak to each other, the way that you speak about each other, you know, uh, um, you know, just the way I just was observing of how you guys look at each other. I mean, it just, you know, from an outsider looking at it, it seems and appears that you guys have such an amazing marriage that you truly love and care about each other, plus your business partners, though. And that is very difficult, dude. <laughs> you know, um, um, and kids. And, and I believe even, you know, grand grandchildren or grandchild, you know, um, like, like what, 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 what's the key, man? What's, what's the secret? Uh, and yeah. I know we go get the book, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. Here's the book right here. But, right here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think that you, you, um, you learn so much from, from your, your partner, your, your wife, or you can be a, a couple and really being a great listener, understanding each other being respectful um when one's you know and listen be, I mean, really hearing each other out you know but respectfully you know there's sometimes that i can be like a little bit loud but then she you know she says hey you know we're talking let's just, just talk a little bit and, and she's right you know it's, i think it's just being a great listener to what their their feelings are and um and uh and supporting one another, which is important, man. You know, being being committed, you know, trust, communication, and being supporting supporting one another, man. You have to first of all, you have to trust each other. You have to trust trust each other when one makes when may, when one decides to do something, it feels feels like it's the right thing for them for you as a couple and the company and, and the real estate business. Then you have to trust that person, man. And 
second of all, you know, you have to learn how to communicate, you know, even to the good and the bad, you know, because I always say that I think a lot of times people are afraid to really communicate what they're feeling, but even if it hurts sometimes or you can be afraid, like it stings, but it has to get, it has to be put out there, Joshua, you know, and I think that you learn so much from honesty, you know, being honest with one another that from each other that you're able to overcome those, those circumstances, either the good or the bad circumstances, you know, and uh, supporting one another, man. You have to learn how to support one another, uh, push each other, see more of each other, you know, learn so much of each other. Rebecca, you know I mean? You got to meet her and spend some time with her. My wife is a very, she's very um, conservative, but very caring and very loving. She has a big heart towards everyone. She wants to be in those rooms. She just loves to be around people on a one-on-one, -on -one, learning so much of each other. She's a freaking powerhouse, man. She'll go out there and tear it up on stage, you know, and I'm really proud of her because of that. You know, she came, she, you know, she was raised in the ministry, you know, from, uh, she's a PK kid, a pastor's kid, you know, my, my in-laws are both pastors in the ministry for over 50 years. So she resembles a lot of, of them when she's on stage, man. And I love to see them because I was, I had the privilege of listening to both my, my father and my mother-in-law minister for you know for the last 20 some years that i've been part of their family and i learned so much from them as leaders you know how important it is to run a, a congregation how important it is to really feel that connection with your audience with your with, with your congregation and love on each other and respect one another and that's who she is man and uh, and to me that's why you really have to learn so much of each other when it comes to like the supporting side of what's important what's what what is, what is it that you really want to get done and that's how we've been able to sustain you know we've been together married right now 22 years and together almost 25 and and i tell you this right now man and i said it on stage you know i said you know sometimes you have to really look back and say who's been those those shining those shining people in your life and been able to push you where you want to go and she's she's my number one man you know she pushes me and sometimes i'm like man i don't want to do this she's like no you are going to do it so you know, that's how it is, man. Just really, really loving each other, man, and really respecting one another. That's why I recommended that. And then I'd say this, even outside of marriage, I mean, even as business partners, man, you have a business partner, you really have to really connect and understand one another's wants and needs, even when you're dating. And, you know, and when we speak on stage, that's what we talked about. It's not all, we're not really, the book is called Married in Real Estate, but it's more, you know, more more intriguing in the sense that we want people to understand the importance of really working through great times, hard times, struggling times, how we were able to oversee, overcome these through our journey, man. So, you know, you go out there, read, take a look at it, read it, man. You know, feel yep. free. Let us yep. know. We love reviews. We love feedback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excited, man. Love it. Um, um, all right. So last question for you, you know, knowing everything that you know now today, if you could go back and have a conversation with yourself when you first started this industry or, or at any point in time, you know, you can choose the, the, you know, to insert, you know, but, but, you know, yourself today is sitting on the couch like I am right here with the oh, younger man. version of yourself, knowing everything you know now today, if you could give yourself two, you know, a couple pieces of advice, what would those couple pieces of advice be? The first one would be, I would align myself with a team was once I first came into the broker, uh, the real estate industry, I would align myself with a, with a team already, a, a team that's sustainable and learn so much of them, you know, not try to go in there blindsided. Number two, I would have started giving back to the community earlier in my career. You know, I think that we had it in us, but we were so um, just in a bubble. Rebecca says the best. She says we were living in a bubble because it was only about us and our family, you understand, like being part of, you know, which is important, man, being a, being a father, you know, with three young children at the time, you know, I think our, our time was more dedicated to our business. That's it. We're done. We're going home. We got baseball. We got all this. But I think that if I was able, we were, if I would be personally, if I was able to really um, be a little bit more involved, more with the community of giving back at the time, I would have did that earlier in my career. And I say that to all my agents now, my new agents, First thing we tell them is, hey, I need you to go get involved with some type of organization. It doesn't matter. Wherever your heart leads you to,
go go do that because it's important that when when you're able to get back that fulfillment that you get that it just gives you a different a different spirit inside that you feel great about man and third of all implement systems a lot earlier in my career yeah. uh, ended with that those three i tell you those three i think to me are the most important yep love it such powerful words and uh you know, for those who are watching and listening, again, we'll have links below to um, all of those ways and Rebecca's social media, uh, a plat all the different platforms along with the book. And and I don't know if I'll be able to get a, a link because the new book's not coming out yet. But if we can include that, if, if I don't know if you can pre-order it, but we'll have all that below to make it easy on all of you. And Josue, man, truly appreciate you taking time out of your busy to be here with us, dude. This has been a huge blessing, a huge honor, and a ton of fun, my friend. Uh, thank you, Joshua, man. Keep Go get that GSD, man. Go follow my guy, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> Only way to roll, man. And those watching, listen, as always, we truly appreciate you. Keep up the amazing work. Keep kicking ass. And we will see you next time. Peace.